guys, it's Becca. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my review on the Wyndham Bonnet Creek Resort in Orlando. This resort is right across the street from Disney Springs. So it's when I say that it's on property, but it's off property, <laughs> it's both are true. You have to go on Disney property to get to this resort, which is off property, if that makes sense at all. So technically it's on property, but technically it's not at the same time. So I know that's confusing, but I just wanted to get that out in the open up front. <laughs> so before we get into it, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So I have stayed at Bonnet Creek now three different times, and all three times have been amazing experiences and I'm really excited to kind of go through all the different aspects of the resort and share with you guys about my experience. So I want to first start by talking about the reservations. This is my family's go-to resort when we need the extra space of a villa, of having a full kitchen, two or three bedrooms, but maybe we can't afford it at a DVC resort on, on Disney property. So staying at Bonnet Creek really allows us to have the space of a two or three bedroom villa without paying the Disney price. So the, those are the instances where we stay at Bonnet Creek. So talking about reservations, Bonnet Creek is a timeshare resort. So when you check in, they are going to try to get you into their timeshare program. It's kind of inevitable. They'll invite you to this breakfast, but you can very politely decline and they won't keep bugging you about it. But it's kind of nice to know that up front that you are staying at a timeshare resort. So because it's a timeshare resort, you can book directly from their website. They have availability directly through there or people who own their timeshare at Bonnet Creek, similar to Disney Vacation Club when you can rent DVC points, similar to that, people can list their timeshare on websites like VRBO, which is how we have been able to find amazing deals at this resort. So we are pretty much renting someone's timeshare through VRBO. When we get to check in, it's as if it's a completely normal reservation as if we booked directly through their website. So it sounds pretty similar to the DVC membership and kind of the process of renting points. Someone else would book the reservation for you. You would have to go through them to make any changes, but we have never had any issues with that before. And we have sometimes been able to find a two bedroom for as little as $150 a night. So that's pretty unheard of on Disney property. And for the luxury that you are getting at Bonnet Creek, it's kind of a steal. So next I wanna talk about the rooms. They do have a one, two, or three bedroom option. There is no studio option, only the one, two, and three bedrooms. It does come with a full washer and dryer, a full kitchen, and again, similar to DVC, housekeeping is available for an additional fee and you have to request it. So same thing, as if we were staying at a DVC resort and we were only staying for three or four nights, housekeeping would not come to our room to give us fresh towels, take out our trash, anything like that, make our beds. Um, but you can request it if that's something that you prefer. We've never had an issue with running out of towels or anything like that. So we have never paid the additional fee for that, but it is available. And I'll try to insert a few pictures of the room so you guys can kind of get a visual of what I'm talking about. Whether you are in a one, two, or three bedroom villa, all of the master bedrooms have a king bed and a huge bathroom. I mean, this thing is huge. <laughs> you walk in and there's a jacuzzi tub with a sink and vanity area, and then you move into the second half of the bathroom, and that is where your walk-in shower is, another sink and vanity area, and your toilet. So it is huge, and I love the, the amount of space that comes in these master suites. And then if you have a second or third bedroom, those will come with two queens, and then there is another separate full bathroom right outside of that bedroom. So I love the amount of space that these villas have. When you factor in the size of the living room, the kitchen, the dining area, these villas are huge. So next I wanna move into the dining options because they do have several great restaurants 
on the resort property, but because they're not Disney owned, we have never thought to made reservations at any of these places. So I'm just gonna list out so you guys can get an idea of what's available because this place, I mean, you really could spend several days here and never even need to leave because there's so much to do. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit later too, but I'm gonna start with the dining options. So I'm gonna be looking down at my notes because I need a little help with all of their options they have. So the first restaurant that I'm gonna mention is the Deep Blue Seafood Grill. And this is on kind of a signature dining level when comparing it to Disney. Um, so that's that's kind of the best way I can describe it. It's, it's It would be a two table service credit if it was a Disney owned resort, but I've peeked inside and it looks beautiful inside. The interior is gorgeous and the menu looks great. So this would definitely be something that we would be interested in if we had maybe a couple extra days on our vacation and just wanted to hang out at Bonnet Creek. Um, and of course you don't have to be staying here to make a reservation at any of these places. The next restaurant I'm going to mention is the Tesoro Cove Family Fair and this is on par with a kind of family buffet table service style meal. <laughs> Again, comparing it to Disney. Um, this would be a great option for if you want that big buffet breakfast, if you're staying there and you just want something right um, at the resort and you don't have to try to rush out the door to get to a reservation at another resort or a park, um, this would be a great option. And I believe they have lunch and dinner as well, but they're mainly known for that amazing breakfast buffet. Okay, the next restaurant I'm gonna mention is Bar 1521. And I'm not quite sure what the 1521 is. I'm sure there's some kind of significance to that, but this is kind of a table service style sushi restaurant. And they're known for their sushi menu and their cocktails. So again, this is another place that I have peeked inside and it looks very trendy and just, again, the interior is beautiful. So this would be maybe another place that we would wanna check out as well, maybe even just to get a drink and an appetizer, but they have some pretty great kind of table service style meals here and I have been really impressed kind of researching what their options have been. Okay, so those are all of the main restaurants that are on their resort property. They also have five additional bar and grill quick service style um, restaurants around the resort as well. So throughout the resort, depending on which building you're staying in, each area has its own little mini restaurant, if that makes sense. So there's pizza, Mexican, seafood, American, um, kind of whatever you're looking for, you can find it there. And I know I've been to one of those, um, I can't remember the name of it exactly, but I do know that we were sitting outside and the food was great. I remember I had fish tacos and it was just so beautiful. On our right, we got to overlook the pool and on our left, we could overlook the lake area and it was covered and just, it was beautiful. So even those quick service type kind of bar and grill style <laughs> restaurants, um, are definitely a little more high end and we really enjoyed our meal there. And then lastly, they have the barista, which is Starbucks and then kind of a little grab and go deli area. So that's really nice. Again, you don't even have to leave uh, the resort area to access Starbucks. So that's something that's really nice as well. Okay, last I wanna mention the amenities and entertainment. So the first thing that I wanna cover is the shuttle that goes from the resort to the Disney parks, because again, this is not a Disney resort, so Disney transportation is not available at Bonnet Creek. They do have a shuttle that drops you off at the parks, and this is available for a daily fee. I'm not quite sure what the fee was when I tried looking it up, I couldn't find it, so I'll try to list it below. If I do find that between the time of me filming this right now and by the time I post it. I remember the lady telling us that when we were checking in that the shuttle runs for each park every 45 minutes to an hour. So if you barely miss the bus, that means you're waiting 45 minutes at least for the next bus to come to that park you're wanting to go to. So that's kind of a bummer. So I, I don't know if it's the most efficient use of your time, especially if you are leaving the park wanting to come back to Bonnet Creek at the end of the day. If you have little ones and you guys are just done, 
you know, the last thing you want to do is wait outside, outside the park for another 45 minutes to an hour waiting on your shuttle to come back. At that point, I would just recommend getting an Uber or I believe minivan is available at Bonnet Creek now. Um, but I just wanted to add that they do have a shuttle service, but I just don't know how worth it it would be for the cost. And then for entertainment, they have so much to do. They have mini golf, they have little outdoor picnic grill areas. I've seen people have birthday parties out at this resort outside. Um, the grounds are just gorgeous. They have this walkway that goes around the whole lake of the resort. It's just beautiful. We have gone, me and Andy, for little nighttime walks around the lake um, after I'm done vlogging and filming for the day. We really enjoy just kind of unwinding and, and walking around the resort. It's really beautiful. So they have five huge pools and some are more adult only pools. And then they have another one, a couple I think that are definitely geared towards kids. So they have one that has this huge pirate ship with a slide. And when we checked out that pool, I was thinking, man, if I had been here when I was six or seven years old, I would have loved this. I was kind of upset that I went as an adult and missed out on the pirate ship. But the pools look amazing. They also have two lazy rivers. And these aren't just little rinky dink lazy rivers. These are like water park lazy rivers and they are so relaxing, so fun. We have done a pool day here before on another trip in the past a couple years ago and we really enjoyed the pool area and kind of checking out each one. You kind of get a different vibe and a, you know environment at each pool you go to because they're all separate for different buildings but you can access all of the pools no matter what building you're staying in. Okay, so that is it for my review on the Wyndham Bonnet Creek resort in Orlando. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. If you have thought about staying here before, um, I would love to help you out um, if you had any questions about it. So definitely let me know in the comments. But thank you guys again for watching. I hope this was helpful kind of getting to hear some information on a non-Disney resort and kind of hearing that there are great alternative affordable options where you can stay in a, you know, a, a two or three bedroom villa for a really reasonable price. So again, thank you for watching. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.